Open access is a term that gets thrown around a lot these days, so whether you're in academia, publishing, government, or libraries, you're going to need to know about open access. So what do people mean when they say open access, and where did this movement come from? First, to put things in context, we have to go back to the 17th century, before the invention of the scholarly journal. It was a bleak and scary information wasteland, full of backstabbing and theft. Well, sort of. But before journals became the norm, up-to-date information was hard to come by and dangerous to share. Scholars relied on correspondence with each other to keep up with recent developments, and if you weren't careful, someone else working on the same problem might just publish faster than you and take all the credit. To prove ownership of new ideas, researchers who weren't ready to publish their full results often announced their discoveries as Latin anagrams, which was totally ineffective in preventing disputes. Now enter the scholarly journal, and by the 18th century, they had taken over. Journals offered ways to publish quickly, beat the competition to the punch, and reach a wider audience than ever before. Sure, there were drawbacks. Authors were never paid, and they gave copyright to their work to the journal. But most agreed that the benefits for authors in the scholarly world at large more than outweighed the cost. Journals covered their overhead with sales revenue. Libraries bought subscriptions so individual researchers could read everything they needed. So far, so good. But then subscription costs went through the roof. Journal prices have risen four times faster than inflation since 1986. Authors still aren't paid by the journals they write for, and neither are the peer reviewers and editors. Thanks to the internet, inexpensive publishing has been a reality for years, but the cost of journals and database subscriptions has continued to rise at exorbitant rates. Although the volume of published research has been rising steadily, it's not enough to account for the steep rise in price. Not all disciplines are subject to the same inflation, but the big picture is that now not even libraries at the richest universities can afford to keep subscriptions to all the journals their faculty and students need access to, and most students and faculty don't see the interlibrary loan system as a good enough solution. But what can we do about it? That's the question that the open access movement is trying to answer. So what is open access? Open access refers to a free and unrestricted availability of journal literature made possible by the convergence of traditional scholarly publishing with the technological possibilities of the internet. There are journals where all published material is free to read and use. That's gold open access. Universities are making open databases of preprints of work produced by faculty and students. That's green open access. The common goal here is to freely distribute scholarly knowledge at a minimal cost, while letting authors keep the rights to their own work and allowing other researchers to build upon prior work in new and innovative ways. There's no one definition of open access on which everyone agrees. Open access was first defined in 2002 by the Budapest Open Access Initiative. Two more statements followed a year later, with slightly different ideas about which barriers should be removed and which rights granted and retained, but all three statements share common ground. That open access must be free of charge to anyone with an internet connection. That authors retain copyright to their work and the rights to be acknowledged and cited, but must allow others to copy, use, distribute, transmit, and display their work, as well as make and distribute derivative works in any digital medium for any responsible purpose. In other words, open access removes price and permission barriers to access and use. Open access has the potential to create opportunities for both amateur and academic researchers to access the vast landscape of scholarly knowledge. It opens up the boundaries of research, giving everyone access to new ideas. It makes information freely available to everyone with an internet connection or a decent local library. And though there may not be one kind of open access that works for everyone, the opportunities that it can provide are too great for anyone to ignore.